the radius r of the circle is increasing at a rate of two centimeters per minute. Find the rate of change of the area when radius is equal to six centimeters. And then B when radius is equal to 24. So here we're not going to do all the questions. We're just going to do the first one when radius is equal to six. Because for red, when radius is equal to 24, the procedure and everything is just be the same. It's just a matter of changing the radius. Where there will be six, you just replace it 24. So we'll do with the first part. So now let's understand. First of all, you have to understand what, what information is given in this question. So when you look at uh, this question, we have the radius R of a circle is increasing at a rate of two centimeters per minute. So the radius of a, the radius R of a circle. So we have this is the circle, and the radius, this radius here, sorry. the radius there, which is R, is increasing at a rate of two centimeters per minute. So the radius here is increasing at a rate. So I mean that there is increase in radius against time as I was talking about rate. So there is increase in radius again is increasing rate, there is change in radius over changing time. So meaning that what you the information that you've been given here is just about it, the gradient here. So we're going to talk about dr we've been given dr over dt. So the radius of a circle is increasing at a rate of two centimeters per minute. So two centimeters per minute. So it's two centimeters per what? minute. Yeah. Now find the rate of change. So now find the rate of change of the area. So if at all, the rate of change of the radius is this. Now they want us to find the rate of change of the area. So meaning here they want us to find if at all we let if we let area to be equals to a, if we let our area to be a. So now the question here is the question here, which is you find the rate of change of area, meaning that we're just talking about the change in area over the change in what change in time. So the change in a over change in change in t. So now that's what is expected from us. So now with the information that we've been given, how do we go about finding that question that is there? So let's look at if I there's another information. And then we've been told, we've been given the value of r here to be six centimeters. And then what next, what else have we been given? Uh -huh. The radius r of a circle is increasing at the rate of two centimeters per minute. Find the rate of change of the area when find the rate of change of the area here, dA over dt. So now how do we find dA over dt? So now guys, here we have to identify first of all, the function that are, the function that are here. So here we have the function of the radius is the function on its own. The area also here is also going to be is a function on its own and time is also a function on its own. So meaning that in this question, we have about three variables. We have about three variables. We have the R variable, we also have T, and we also have the A. So radius, time, and the area. So now, if at all we have those three variables that are there, use, we can use chain rule to find the value of GA over GT. So now, if at all we, we say GA, GA over GT using chain rule, using those variables that are given. So this will just be dA over the variable that is not appearing. Here we have A and C. What variable is not appearing here? It is this, which is R. So it will be D, R. Then multiply by here, dR over dT. So dA over dT is equals to dA over dA over dR multiplied by dR over dT. So now when you look at it, dr over dt, we have the information, we have the value for that is given there. And then when you look at dA over dr, we don't have that, that information, but we can find it. So it's just a matter of, first of all, finding the formula, the formula for area of a circle. So we have to, since you are talking about area, so we have to find the area of 
the shape that is under discussion. So the shape that is under discussion in this question is circle. So we have to find the area of a circle. So the question is, how do we find that area of a circle? So we, it's not something which is difficult. It will be like this area of a circle is just given by pi r squared. So that is the area of a circle. So now if that is the area of a circle. So now we have we have two variables. We have area and we have a and r. Those are our variables. So we can find we can find from that information that we have been given. We can find the a over the r. So the a over the r in this in that question to just be two pi r. So that is the differential there. So, so now we have the R over the T. We also have the A over the R. So meaning that it's just a matter of now replacing in that equation that we have as simple as that. So now we have so now the value of R that we are going to use here is six. Remember, guys, don't just replace the value of R there before you differentiate. Replace the value of R after you differentiate it. So now when what is the A? over the r when r is what six so when r is six we just replace the value of two pi multiplied by six which will just give us twelve pi so here we have our da over d r is twelve so our da over the r is twelve so now we have the information needed in order for us to find the answers. So in conclusion, therefore, the A over the T is equals to what is the value of the A over the R we found through. So when you look at this, here we have the A over the R, what, is, what will be the units there? So we start with area. What, is the, what are the units for area here? Since we're using centimeters, eh? so it will be centimeters squared. So it will be centimeters squared over what are the units for radius? That's talking about that's the length, right? So we're talking about centimeters. So radius here, the units will just be centimeters. So in short, here, dA over dr is just 12. Cent that centimeter and the other one will cancel. So we're just going to remain with it 12 centimeters. So that's the information that we have there. So now we're getting that same value 12. Multiplied by what is the R over dt? The R over dt is two, so this is giving us twenty-four. So what? Twenty-four what? You have to know here. You have to state the units. You don't have to leave it hanging. Say twenty-four. So now to find the unit here, don't get confused. You just look at what you have. Here we have area. Here we have what time? What are the what what what, what are the units for area here? When you're discussing, what are the units for area? Or in the units that we are using here are centimeters. So here it will just be centimeters squared. And for T, we're using minutes. So here it will just be 24. For area is what? Centimeters squared over for time, we are using minutes. So we have found the L over D. We have found our the L over the T. Unless there is a question, to be there. So you guys here, it's 12, 12 pi. Even here is 12 pi. And then the answer here, the final answer is 24 pi centimeter squared. So here is 24 pi. So here we have 12, 12 pi. Thank you very much for that correction. Uh -huh. Unless there's another question again. So it's 24 pi centimeter squared, square centimeters per minute. So if I tell you don't have any question, let's move to question number, let's move to question number 14. A spherical balloon is inflated with gas at the rate of 500 cubic 
centimeters per minute. How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing in the eastern when the radius is 30 centimeters? In the eastern, so where radius, our radius is 30 centimeters. So now here, what information? First of all, you have to know the information that you've been given in the equation. And then after you've known the information, that's when you also know what is required of you to do in that question. So you have to find out that. So now from the information here, look at, listen at this. A spherical balloon is inflated with gas at a rate of 500 cubic centimeters per minute. So that's 500. So that's 500 cubic centimeters per watt per minute. So now you ask yourself, say, this information that I'm given here, this information is for what? You ask yourself that question. So that information, 500 cubic centimeters per minute. Is it centimeters? Yeah, centimeters per minute. What is that information for? So now let me, let me let's start with this centimeter uh, cubic centimeters. This information is what what do you think this information is for? Anyone to just give it a try? Volume. For what? For volume. Exactly. Very volume. correct. That information is for volume. Let's look at this minute. This is for what? Time. Time. Okay, so now we have volume over time. So here we're talking about the change in volume over the change in what time. That's the information that we have been given in this question. So here we have our dv. If we let, sorry, we can just say let v be equals to volume of the volume of the sphere, and then we talk about time to be equals to our t be equals to time. So 500 there, we have dv over dt, that is 500 cubic per minute. So now we're done with that. And then the next thing is, how fast is the radius? Look at it. How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing at a, how fast is the, how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing at the instant when the radius is R? So in this one, we are asked to find the change in radius, how gain is the change in time. So here we have to find our dr over dt. Because for us to know how fast it is increasing, we just have to know, we have to look at even the time, we have to look at the change in time, we have to look at the change in radius, again, it's the change in time. That's when you can know how fast the balloon is increasing. Uh -huh. So this is this information is the one that we that is what we are looking for. So how do we go about finding that one? So we have to identify the variables that we have in this question. So first of all, we have this variable here, which is volume v. We also have the variable of time. We also have the variable of uh, so we have three variables. So in short, we have three variables. We have v, t. And uh, like that. So you have to know the formula here. We have to know the formula for volume of a sphere. Very, very important. So look at this question that we have here dr over dt. This is given by dr. We start with this over. We look at the variable. Now, since here we have r and t, the remaining variable is the one that's supposed to be here. So we have. R and T, so we're remaining with V here. So here it will be dV multiplied by dV over dT, like that. So that this and that is going to go, then we're going to remain with our original question. So that's, we are going to use chain rule to find dR over dT. So now the question is, we have this, this information, we don't have it. That information, dR over dV, we don't have it. But for, the, for that information, dv over dt, we have that information. It's given in the question. It's there, dv over dt. So now we have just have to find dr over dt. So you know to say dr over dt, dr over dt. 
oh sorry not dt dv this is just the same as one over dv over dr isn't it DV, dr over dv is just the same as just a, this is just the recipe this is the same as one over dv over dr like that mm -hmm. so now like we can it's easier for us to find the dv over dv over dr as compared to finding dr over dv direct why is it easier because here we are going to find the formula we are going to okay we know the formula for we know the formula for volume volume of a sphere so now we know the formula for volume of a sphere information is that mm -hmm. so the volume the formula for volume of a sphere so just the volume of the sphere volume which is just denoted by v of a sphere is just four over three pi r to the power t three so that is the that's a formula for volume of a sphere four over three pi r three so now if i tell you have that is our that's a formula next let's differentiate that we have two variables we have v and r so we can just differentiate this or even from the way it is you can still you can make other the subject but it's better we just go there we just go there the way it is so dv over dr here dv over dr that is just equals to here you have four over three it's a constant pi is a constant r to the power three that one is the one which is a variable so to differentiate that you just you just consider this part here so three, you are going to multiply. Three is going to multiply the coefficient of r here, so it will be four pi over three multiplied by three, the one that is there, and then r to the power three minus one, say two. So you are seeing that three and that three cancels, and then we remain with four pi over r squared. So that is our dv over dt. So dv over dt is just four pi r squared. Mm -hmm. So if that's that's the case. So now what about uh, the value of dv over dr when we are given our r here to be six? Which one are we using? R is 30. So if uh, when our r is, is 30 here, when r is equals to 30, what will be dv over dr? This 30 is coming from the equation, from the question that we are talking about here. So now dv over dr, given r to be equals to 30, is equals to 4 pi 30 squared. So this is just going to give us 30 squared, that's 9. Let me see. So 300. Yeah, 300. So this is 3. 1600 pi. So we have dv over dr when r is 30 is equals to 3600 pi. And now, what would be the units for that? What do you think would be the unit? You look at volume, the units for volume are cent cubic centimeters over. What are the units for radius? The units for radius. The units for radius are centimeters. So you're saying that this is just giving, this is going to give us centimeter squared. So the units there will just be centimeter squared. So now, guys, we have found the V over the T. Now, how do we use this to find it? dr over dv okay we found dv over dr how do we use this to find dr over dt so you know to say if you are to make this the subject here you are to make dr the subject just in okay in short this is just the reciprocal of dr over dv so if i told dv over dt, dv over dr is that it therefore implies that dr over dt dv it's just a reciprocal, which is just one over three, six pi centimeter squared. 
that is the answer there. So now we have found our TR over DV. So it's just a matter of using that information that we have. And the first information there on top, and then you plug it in this formula that we have here. So that's what is remaining to be done. So here we have D, DR over DT is equals, what is DR over DV? It is just that value, one over, I'm going to ignore the units, I'm going to include them at the end. And then what about DV over DT? DV over DT is there, five, 500. So now next, I can just cancel that and that cost, that and that cost. So we are going to remain with DR over DT, which is equals to five over six, like that. So now once I'm six pi, I always forget pi. Six pi. So now I want someone to give me the units for this. I want someone to give me the units. Anyone to give me the units? Centimeter per huh? minute. Okay. Centimeter per minute. Correct. Because radius here, we just talk about centimeters over time we talk about minutes. So that is the answer for that question unless the so question number 11 the cross-section of a five meter drum is an isosceles trapezoid with a two meter lower base and a three meter upper base and an attitude of two meters water is running into the trap at the rate of one cubic meter per minute how fast is the water level rising when the water level is one meter deep? How fast is the water level rising when the water level is one meter, one meter deep? So now we have to, again, understand this question very well. So now from this information that we've been given, I want someone to deduce, okay, to tell us the information Okay, just one information that is given in this question. At a cross section of a five meter trunk is an isosceles trapezoid with five, two meters, two meter lower base, three meter upper base, and an altitude of two meters. Water is running into the trunk at a rate of one cubic meter per minute. So that's one cubic meter, what is it? One cubic meter per minute. So that's one cubic meter for me. That information is for what? That, that is the VDT. Okay, so we have one cubic per minute. So in this, we are seeing that here we've been given the change in volume over change in time, which is just dv over dt is equals to one cubic per minute. Mm -hmm. And then the next information here is, how fast is the water level rising? How fast is the water level rising? So they are talking about the height. How fast is the water level rising when the water level is one meter deep, when the water level is one meter deep, how fast is it rising? So we're talking about the change in height over changing time. So dh over dt, we don't know that information. And now they want us to find how fast is the water rising when our h, when the water level is one meter deep. Let me see this of all something that I have to see. One cubic meter, not centimeters, it's one cubic and then one meter deep. So it's at the water level is one meter deep. So that's the information that we've been given there. And we are told to say this trump, the length of that trump is five 
meters. So the length of the drum is five meters. And then what else we have there? Mm -hmm. So let's look at, let me just see if I thought this is going to come out. So let's start, let's try to sketch the graph. Mm -hmm. So here we have this, a cross section of a five meter drum is an isosceles. The cross section, uh -huh. the cross section of a five meter drum is an isosceles drum toid with two meters lower base and five meters upper base with an altitude of two meters. So now let's suppose, let's suppose this is our tram. And then if this is our tram, what is given in this equation is, this length of this is five meters from this length, the, this is the tram and this length is five meters. And now the end point, the end point, now that talking about this shape that you're seeing here, this part and this part here. So this part, it has a shape of just a trapezium, like a sources, so now a trapezium, this part. And even, even this part is also a trapezium. So now you have, first of all, to know the formula for trapezium. That's number one thing. So let's start. So now if I do, I draw something like this. And then mm. so now since the end point this side, so that's that's the trunk. Now the end point here are talking about an isosceles trunk zoid. So me that it will just be something like this. So that's that shape there, it's supposed to look like a trapezium there, side. And then even this side also, we do the same. Like that. Mm -hmm. So now the length from this point, from this point to that point, that's the trunk that we're talking about, which is five meters. And then the lower base here, this lower base we are told to say it is two meters. And then the height of this, the, look at it, the end point here. The height from this point to that point, the height is two meters. So the height, I'll just, I'll just write it like this, our H here. Our H here is equals to two meters. 